Back in August 2018, we'd benchmark the impact Denuvo has on performance and loading times with several games that had removed the DRM. If you haven't watched those videos yet, you can do so later. Since then, several more games have had Denuvo removed, which gives us an opportunity for further testing. We have also used this chance to include a few games we omitted from our previous videos. Let's start with the most recent title to have removed Denuvo, Dishonored 2. On the left is the game benchmarked right before Denuvo was removed. On the right is the game benchmarked right after Denuvo was removed. These are the identical settings we use for both runs in the game's benchmark tool. As you can see, we maxed every setting as high as it would go here and with all games tested for this video. With Dishonored 2, however, we could not unlock the frame rate completely as the limiter was capped at 120 frames per second. Apparently, the developers implemented this cap to prevent physics issues that only occurred above 120 frames per second. Fortunately, that didn't have an impact on our results, which are on the screen. Our benchmark of Dishonored 2's Dust District averaged 56.843 frames per second before Denuvo was removed, and 60.822 frames per second right after the removal. Frame times average 17.594 milliseconds with a maximum of 41.385 milliseconds before Denuvo was removed, and an average of 16.44 milliseconds with a maximum of 36.279 milliseconds right after the removal. Please note that if you see any stuttering in this or any subsequent benchmark, it is Shadowplay having issues recording the video file. If you're a subscriber, you might remember our review of Battlefield 5 was similarly delayed because of this. Unfortunately, the cause has not yet been found and thus not yet fixed. That being said, the stutters Shadowplay recorded are not reflected in the results. Let's move on to Dishonored 2's standalone expansion, Death of the Outsider, which removed Denuvo concurrently with the base game. All settings were set at their highest, though as with the base game, the frame rate limit could not be disabled merely pushed up to 120. The game took 177 seconds to load the main menu before Denuvo was removed, and 135.92 seconds after the removal. The Denuvo protected version was 30.22% slower than the Denuvo free version. It should be noted that all opening cinematics and intro videos were disabled for all tests. When it came to loading the benchmark mission, Death of the Outsider took 73.02 seconds before Denuvo was removed and 40.37 seconds after the removal. The Denuvo protected version was 80.88% slower than the Denuvo free version. With everything loaded, how did Death of the Outsider perform? The game ran at a minimum of 39 frames per second and an average of 56.331 frames per second before Denuvo was removed and a minimum of 40 frames per second and an average of 59.91 frames per second after the removal. The Denuvo free version had a 2.56% higher minimum and a 6.35% higher average frame rate. We also measured frame times at an average of 17.752 milliseconds and a maximum of 136.945 milliseconds before Denuvo was removed and an average of 16.691 milliseconds and a maximum of 57.866 milliseconds after the removal. The Denuvo protected build's average frame time was 6.35% slower than the Denuvo free build and its maximum frame time was 136.7% slower than the Denuvo free build. Let's move on to Lords of the Fallen, which removed not just Denuvo, but also the DRM it used to protect, Steam. As before, all settings were maxed out with VSync disabled to unlock the frame rate. To load the menu for the first time, the Denuvo protected Steam build took 58 seconds, while the DRM free GOG version took 42.1 seconds, making the Denuvo build 37.77% slower. On subsequent runs, however, the difference all but disappeared as the Steam build took 38.26 seconds and the GOG version took 37 seconds. Loading the benchmark mission was much the same as both versions took around 41 seconds. However, there was a stark difference in performance between the two builds. The Denuvo protected Steam build averaged 53.618 frames per second with a minimum of 44 FPS, while the DRM free GOG version averaged 70 frames per second with a minimum of 51 FPS. 
Moving on to frame times, the GOG version averaged 14.27 milliseconds, with a maximum of 45.703 milliseconds, while the Denuvo protected Steam build averaged 18.649 milliseconds with a maximum of 190.451 milliseconds. Let's move on to Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition. Before Denuvo was removed, the game took 47 seconds to load the main menu for the first time, dropping to 23.7 seconds on subsequent startups. After Denuvo was removed, the game took 43.09 seconds to load the main menu for the first time, dropping to 16.95 seconds on subsequent startups. To load the benchmark mission, the Denuvo protected build took 11.78 seconds on its first try, which dropped to 6.82 seconds on subsequent runs, while the Denuvo free build took 6.85 seconds on its first try, dropping to 5.66 seconds on subsequent loads. We opted to benchmark one of the earlier missions, starting at the point the player is told they are being graded and ending when the NPC says no other options. The sequence features plenty of explosions in the midst of combat, which should make for an ideal test to measure Denuvo's impact. That being said, if you notice any stuttering is due to Shadowplay struggling to record footage and not the game's performance or lack thereof, so it should not be reflected in the benchmark results. Bulletstorm averaged 149.629 frames per second with a minimum of 57 FPS before Denuvo was removed, and an average of 164.313 FPS with a minimum of 83 FPS after the removal. Before Denuvo was removed, the game averaged 6.683 milliseconds with a maximum of 171.122 milliseconds. After Denuvo was removed, the game averaged 6.086 milliseconds with a maximum of 45.77 milliseconds. Let's move on to Life is Strange Before the Storm, which used Denuvo only for the first episode, following which it was dropped. We couldn't compare if Denuvo made any difference in loading the main menu, as the fix to skip intros didn't work for us, at least not while Denuvo was in place. Fortunately, we were able to measure loading times for the checkpoint that followed our benchmark sequence. Before Denuvo was removed, the game took 12 seconds to load this checkpoint on its first run, dropping to 6 seconds on subsequent runs. After Denuvo was removed, the game took 9.69 seconds to load the same checkpoint on its first run, dropping to 4.42 seconds on subsequent runs. Was there any such improvement in performance? Before Denuvo was removed, the game measured a minimum of 116 frames per second with an average of 175.839 frames per second. After Denuvo was removed, the game measured a minimum of 113 frames per second with an average of 181.068 frames per second. Frame times average 5.687 milliseconds with a maximum of 420.246 milliseconds before Denuvo was removed, and an average of 5.523 milliseconds with a maximum of 241.436 milliseconds after the removal. Next up is Moto Racer 4 a game that required digging into the configuration files to unlock the frame rate and enable anisotropic filtering. The game took 42 seconds to load the main menu before Denuvo was removed and 29.31 seconds right after. Unfortunately, there is no footage of this test to show as Shadowplay corrupted the recorded file. We benchmarked the first race the game had us complete, so please excuse the rubbish driving. The game took 25.9 seconds to load this first race before Denuvo was removed and 16.08 seconds after the removal. The game measured a minimum of 98 frames per second with an average of 176 frames per second before Denuvo was removed and a minimum of 132 frames per second with an average of 180.64 frames per second after the removal. Frame times measured an average of 5.68 milliseconds with a maximum of 443.07 milliseconds before Denuvo was removed, and an average of 5.536 milliseconds with a maximum of 68.035 milliseconds after the removal. Our next benchmark tests Rhyme, which had its Denuvo protection cracked less than a week after launch by Boldman, who had this to say, the game will be much better without that huge abomination called Denuvo. In Rhyme, that ugly creature went out of control. How do you like three fucking hundreds of thousands calls to triggers during initial game launch and save game loading? Did you wonder why game loading times are so long? Here is the answer. In previous games like Sniper Ghost Warrior 3, 
near, prey, there were only about 1,000 triggers called. So we have 300 times here. Next, 300,000 called triggers were just a warm-up for Denuvo. After 30 minutes of gameplay, it became two fucking millions of called triggers. Protection now calls about 10 to 30 triggers every second during actual gameplay, slowing game down. In previous games like Sniper Ghost Warrior 3, Nier, Prey, there were only about one to two triggers called every several minutes during gameplay. So do the math. Don't forget that triggers is under VM and heavily obfuscated, which obviously does not improve performance. To be fair, the developer did remove Denuvo from the game shortly after it was cracked, which is what enabled the following test. On the left is the game right before Denuvo was removed. On the right is the game right after. We set most of the game's graphics to their maximum except for anti-aliasing, where we opted for TXAA instead of SSAA. Super sampling anti-aliasing renders the game at a higher resolution, creating a GPU limited scenario which is not what we want. Without further ado, let's get back to the results. Before the removal, the game averaged 87.649 frames per second with a minimum of 50 frames per second. After Denuvo was removed, the game measured a minimum of 64 frames per second and an average of 98.329 frames per second. Frame times measured an average of 11.409 milliseconds and a maximum of 136.199 milliseconds before the removal, and an average of 10.169 milliseconds and a maximum of 65.462 milliseconds after Denuvo was removed. If you're curious how the removal changed loading times, we have already explored this in our previous video on loading times. If you haven't watched it yet, you can do so later. For now, here's the relevant bit. We noted the game taking longer to load on the first run, both before and after the removal. The Denuvo protected build took 1 minute and 39 seconds to load on its first run, dropping to 1 minute 22 seconds on its second run, rising to 1 minute 25 seconds on its third run, then dropping again to 1 minute 8 seconds on its fourth run, and then stabilizing on 1 minute and 7.98 seconds on its fifth run. After Denuvo was removed, the game took 1 minute and 6.47 seconds to load on its first run, dropping to 41.2 seconds on its second run, and stabilizing around 41.76 seconds to 41.38 seconds on its third and fourth runs. Denuvo increased Rhyme's loading times by 50% on the first startup and by 65.8% on subsequent startups. That benchmark tests several other games not featured in this video, so remember to give it a watch once you've finished with this one. We'll leave a link to it at the end of this video. For our final title, let's look at a game that has not yet removed Denuvo. At least, not by the developers. Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Instead, Scene Group Skid Row substituted the game's Denuvo protected EXE with the unprotected EXE from Deus Ex Breach. Now, our original benchmark did criticize another YouTuber's test for comparing a Denuvo crack to the legitimate game. Our criticism was based on the fact that cracks don't remove Denuvo. They merely bypass it, meaning cracked performance is still impacted by Denuvo. There is only one exception to this we know of, the one we're looking at right now, Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Because Skid Row's release does not use the Denuvo protected EXE at all, it is the only crack that has removed Denuvo entirely and is thus suitable for our analysis. On the left is a legitimate game purchased on Steam. On the right is the breached executable. The legitimate Steam build took 39 seconds to load the main menu on its first run and dropped only to 34 to 35.25 seconds on subsequent runs. In contrast, the breached version took 24 seconds to load the main menu on its first run and dropped to 19 to 22 seconds on subsequent runs. If you're interested in an average of multiple runs, the Denuvo protected Steam build took 36.083 seconds to load the main menu, while the breached build took 21.67 seconds, meaning the Denuvo protected version took 66.5% longer. As stated earlier, all opening cinematics and intro videos were disabled with a launch parameter. We also tested loading times on one particular mission. The legitimate Steam build took 54 seconds to load this mission on its first run dropping to 52 seconds on subsequent runs. The breached build took 47 seconds to load the mission on its first run and dropped to 46 seconds on subsequent runs. Looking at the average of multiple runs, the Denuvo protected version was almost 14% slower. 
differences disappeared when measuring how long both versions took to load the game's benchmarking tool. The legitimate Steam build took around 29 seconds to load the benchmark on first and subsequent runs, while the Breach build took 28 seconds to load the game on its first run and dropped to 26 seconds on subsequent runs. If you're interested in the average of multiple runs, the Denuvo protected Steam build took 29.01 seconds, while the breached build measured an average of 28 seconds. Once the benchmark was done loading, how was the performance it measured? On the first run, the Denuvo protected Steam version measured a minimum of 11 frames per second and an average of 63.2 frames per second, while the breached build measured a minimum of 41.5 FPS and an average of 65.4 FPS. If you're interested in the average of multiple runs, the Denuvo Protected Steam version measured an averaged minimum of 21.8 frames per second and an averaged average of 63.633 frames per second, while the Breach build measured an averaged minimum of 43.15 frames and an averaged average of 65.25 frames. This is probably a good time to talk about the hardware used in this test. We've got a 1080 Ti to eliminate any GPU bottlenecks, though we do have a stock clock second generation i7 with 12GB of DDR3 RAM. As Denuvo is reported to strain the CPU rather than the GPU, this is a good setup to test that theory. All tests up to this point were conducted on a 7200 RPM hard drive. However, we tested Deus Ex Mankind Divided again on a 4TB 5400 RPM Western Digital hard drive to measure if Denuvo has a different impact on slower drives. To load the benchmark tool, the Denuvo protected build took an average of 37.656 seconds while the breach build took on average 37.514 seconds. Since storage speed is thought to primarily affect loading times and not performance, this might be a good time to wrap things up. There were other games that removed Denuvo, such as Titanfall 2, but we did not have them in our library at the time of the removal. Nevertheless, we believe our test to be a sufficient sample size given the circumstances and we will let you draw your own conclusions. With that said, we will return to the subject when more games have Denuvo removed. So please like, subscribe and press the bell button so you don't miss out. If you like this video, please share it. While you're here, feel free to watch our playlist on Denuvo's history and performance impact, which includes the videos we referenced earlier, our analysis of the DRM stronger than Denuvo, and our hardware analysis of CPUs and GPUs. Do you play Rainbow Six Siege or Dota 2? Check out the other channel for analytical guides for both games. Link is in the description and on the screen.